Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Playful Humans podcast. I'm your host, Mike Montague, and my guest this week is Gene McGee. He's an MC at Universal Orlando and SeaWorld. You can find him at Facebook. Uh, just go Gene Lionel McGee Jr., and you can make sure you get the right one there. And yes. you can find Playful Humans at PlayfulHumans.com. Share this podcast with somebody that you think needs to hear it. That would help us out a ton. And if you want to learn more about the power of play in your life and career, go to PlayfulHumans.com and check out the stuff we have going on there. All right. Uh, big podcast here today. We're going to find out how Gene plays for a living. like to start with the joke of the week the joke of the week is brought to you by fairy tales uh since you're down in orlando uh life is not a fairy tale if you lose a shoe at midnight you're not a princess you're just drunk yeah, uh, fairy true story. <laughs> <laughs> right. yes. now the official joke of the week uh did you hear about the new toy testing that sesame street is doing this year no i didn't hear about it every tickle me elmo before it leaves the factory is getting two testicles ah uh, ah uh. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Do you have a favorite joke? Well, actually, I had a favorite one, but I want to piggyback off of your joke um, of dealing with uh, Disney. Uh, this is a Disney joke. Um, how many tickles does it take to make Ursula from Little Mermaid laugh? How many tickles does it take to make Ursula laugh? Uh, I don't know. It takes 10 tickles. Tentacles. Ah, Tentacles. I got it. I like it. <laughs> so that was that one. Yes. And yeah. and then my favorite joke that I, I came here with, uh, it, it makes me just giggle to myself every time I hear it. And my favorite one is, why did the blind man fall down the well? Why did the blind man fall in the well? Because he couldn't see that well. <laughs> <laughs> so silly. So I got another one for you. Uh, you can feel free to steal because I, I steal all of these uh, bad jokes off the internet mostly. Oh, yeah. Uh, but since you work at SeaWorld, yes. um, I have uh, some dolphin jokes, but they're terrible on porpoise. Oh, of course, of course. You know what? <laughs> I, I think it's uh, fantastic what you have here. Uh, all right, awesome. So uh, I've already hinted that you get to MC yeah. at Universal uh, Orlando yeah. and at, at SeaWorld. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing there, like what shows you got going on and how that works and, and maybe how you got into it. Yeah, so um, I'm utilizing my skill set as a host MC for both companies. And actually, I have the MC for Disney as well. Same skill set, just different setting. So uh, currently, I am uh, the MC at Universal Orlando for this new show called DreamWorks Destination. It's a one of a kind meet and greets dance party with DreamWorks stars such as the Trolls, uh, characters nice. from Madagascar, um, Kung Fu Panda characters, and much, much more. So it's a dance, it's an indoor dance party meet and greets uh, with professional dancers and an MC that facilitates it. So I'm one of the MCs that facilitates it. And at SeaWorld, I'm the warm-up act for the Dolphin Adventure. Uh, the Dolphin Adventure replaced uh, the Blue Horizons show that was around for years and years and years. Yeah. Uh, but SeaWorld has since pivoted. They've gone away from shows and now it's more of a presentation. So it's now it's more educational, uh, telling about what the dolphins do and how we can become a uh, part of their story. So it's more of a learning and but for me, uh, I'm more the fun and games guy. So we kind of uh, get the audience excited for dolphins by doing trivia and doing clapping games. All the games we do are based off of uh, dolphins playing. And we just basically we play with other humans to let them know, yeah. hey, here's how dolphins play. But this is how we do it as humans. So relating to dolphins in that sense. So I'm the, the warm up guy for the dolphin adventure at SeaWorld. And at Universal, I'm the MC host for DreamWorks Destination. Uh, I love that. And I uh, have seen the Dolphin Show uh, for sure. We have a, a sales training 
uh, in Orlando that I do every year. And my wife loves to go to SeaWorld and Universal and uh, all the Disney parks and, and stuff as well. But um, I'm going to have to look for you next time we're down there. That would be awesome. I, yes. I wanted to ask you more about the, the dolphins, though, because I think that's one of my favorite things that I found in play research is that all mammals on the planet play. Uh, yes. We all speak ball. If you give a dolphin a ball, if you give a, a yes. cow a ball, if you give a, you know, a, yes. a human a ball, we all like love to play and experiment and see, you know, especially things that have a little randomness or, or chaos to it, because if a ball bounces differently every time, it, it continues to be interesting for us as, yes. as mammals. But I'm wondering what you see in SeaWorld, I think it's it's a fun career yes. to be playful, but sometimes when you make play your work, it becomes boring. But then you're also getting to see a whole bunch of people and especially children experience yes. some real magical moments in, in their life, right? Yeah, so one of the things that I learned, uh, just like I've only been at SeaWorld since December, uh, but one of the things I've learned is uh, when dolphins play together in their pods, it actually builds their relationships. So that's what we do. We play, we're building relationships. So dolphins do it. We do it as well. So anytime you're playing with another human, you're building a relationship. So you're basically uh, learning how humans play, how your counterpart plays. And it's, it's like a building block of human relationships. And it all starts from play. And that's what I learned. Dolphins do the same thing, just in a different way. So a lot of their uh, like playing is nonverbal. So we play nonverbal games. Like one of my favorite games we play is called Tail Slap. So pretty much uh, it's hard to, uh, to do it here in the screen, but I hold my hands out. I'll do it like here. I hold my hands out like this. But keep in mind, it's in a stadium, so my hands are larger. But just for this screen. Yeah. Uh, and when one hand passes the other, you clap one time. So we do that for the whole audience. So we do that, and they clap, and get a whole stadium clapping. And then we just have fun with the clapping, like doing dancing or or kind of doing that, but not really making them go and make the audience clap when they're not supposed to clap and everybody laughs because it's silly. Uh, but it just shows you that we can still play games and not talk, but based off body language, dolphins and like the mammals just do the same things. It's a, in a state of play, but we're learning and we're building relationships as we're doing that. So that's one thing I learned since I've been at SeaWorld. Uh, yeah, I love that. And it really is amazing that so many people forget that that's how we build relationships, how we made our best friends when we were kids <laughs> and, and stuff is by playing. And then we get uh, to be adults and we try to work together in teams and try really hard. And, uh, you know, <laughs> we forget to, that playing is really where the, the relationships are built. But I wanted to yes. follow on that chaos thought a little bit because you mentioned it there, too, where. Uh, especially humor needs some sort of surprise. If it's predictable, it's oh boring. Gosh. And you said yes. with your clapping game, you'll know you'll kind of trick people and you'll change it up and stuff yes. so that they're, it stays interesting. But I found that people that play for a living, sometimes that can be a challenge. How do you feel about doing the same show over and over again for, for yes. six months? Yes, fantastic question. So, well, I work in theme parks and theme parks, especially entertainments, it's all repetition. It's literally the same thing over and over and over again um but here's the fun parts the fun part is it's different people every single time so just like a like a stand-up comedian or you know a perform i mean actually i'll, I'll keep the uh, stand-up comedian analogy because stand-up comedians they're saying the same thing they've been saying for months maybe years it takes a long time to craft that material so where every word is said for a reason, and but it takes repetition. It takes you saying the same thing over and over and over and over until you get it just right to where your your beat, your breath, you could just sit, do one of these, and that'll get a laugh. Uh, it, it's 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 finding the funny in your words and in your pauses or your inflections. And the only way to do that is to do it over and over and over and over again to when you get that reward. Because uh, as, as performers, your reward is the laughter and the applause. It's, it's basically our, our positive reinforcements. Uh, basically, the audience trains you. Like the audience is training us 
like, hey, we like that. Keep doing that. Right. So it's a reward system. So I'm like, well, I'm going to keep saying this again. There's a new group <laughs> of people that hasn't seen this. That last group liked it. Hey, I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, they like it too. Okay. And then it's it's literally the audience is training, is training us. So that's how I could you know get over the repetition of it feels good to make people laugh. It feels good to get people clapping. Uh, it takes their mind off of whatever's going on in the world that doesn't exist right now is what we're doing here and there. And people want to laugh, and you want to make them well as our personalities. You want to make them laugh because it's synergy. It makes me feel good that you're laughing. It makes them feel good that they're laughing. So I'm like, wait, how do I do more of this? How do I get the most out of this? How do I get them less? So it feels good for me. Like I have something fun for you. It's almost like a present that they don't know they're going to get that. Okay. This is something that I know that works. And I say the thing and they laugh and it's, so it's one of those things. It's like a comedian, like a performance. You do it a ton of times. Uh, it doesn't get repetitive if you're doing it right, if you're getting a good reaction. And then if it yeah, does get I repetitive, that. you switch it up a bit. Yeah, yeah, you hit kind of three things that I've noticed in, in my career. One is definitely the audiences. It's fun to watch somebody else experience it for the first time. And like you said, have that little present that you're like, oh, wait till, especially some people <laughs> that start, um, you know, getting ahead of you. Right. Yes. And they're like, oh, I see what you're doing. You're like, no, yes. not yet. I got you right where I want you. Yes. Um, yes. And that's yeah. the kind of stuff is great. Uh, number two is that shows do in your performances evolve over time, too. So it may be slow, but I think when performers get bored or people uh, get bored at their jobs, it's because they're not growing. They've stopped pushing and learning how to do it slightly differently and then some of my shows i think they do change enough too that over time i do a lot of game shows well we change the questions and so questions hit differently or jokes hit differently because of the questions in the games or or different teams win or different personalities win uh when doing it every time to to keep that fun uh but you hit something else there that that i wanted to ask about because i think um the audience and reading the audience and the way their reactions uh, come into it and, and train us as performers, I think is interesting because that is kind of the, the payoff is being in that present moment and getting that authentic reaction, even if what you're doing is manufactured. And I think yes. some people don't understand that unless you've really done it a lot where it's a magical moment that when you're giving a performance, you have to be fully present and engaged, yes. even if you're doing a repetitive show over and over again. Yeah. And like I said, in the theme parks, like, uh, um, let's see, at DreamWorks, I do five shows a day, you know, four or five days a week. Um, now, uh, at DreamWorks, it's three different shows with different music, different dance, different characters. So there is some variety but for the most part you know you're uh oh and the good thing about the dreamworks it's non-scripted it's whatever you come up with yeah so i've I've been able to come up with kind of crafting some bits Uh, at sea world what i'm saying is scripted but you can say it in your own way it's it's like here are the games you play here are the words we suggest so you kind of have an outline like okay i'll say it like this but actually i i found better if i say it it's better for me if I say this like this. And they're, you know, all about as long as it works. Uh, so in SeaWorld, we we'll do about maybe about four, let's say four or five presentations. They call them presentations. We don't call them shows. We call them presentations. They're mm-hmm. very particular about that. And I understand why. Um, so we do about four presentations. Now, I do SeaWorld about once a week. So I'm at DreamWorks five days a week, SeaWorld once a week. So six days a week. Um, but the, the, the learning for uh, both those stages are actually kind of different because SeaWorld is a stadium. The Dolphin Stadium is at least a couple thousand, at least two, maybe three thousand. So I've learned from talking to other stand-up comedians, if you work in a stadium, you have to uh, take a breather uh, if you're telling a joke because it takes a second or two for them to get it, for them to, to hit and then come back. So you have to let things breathe. And I'm used to kind of speaking quick. So my first few weeks, I was like, nothing's working. Not that I'm saying I'm saying the funniest things ever, but I'm not really getting the laughs. And then <laughs> yeah. the comedian's like, no, you have to hold it a bit. It takes a second. 
Uh, so I'm like, oh, I get it. And at DreamWorks, I'm learning more timing because it's on a timer. So uh, it's five minutes of meet and greets, but the MC is talking. And then two minutes of dancing. We get off stage and they dance for two minutes. Then we're on for five minutes, more talking, and then a two-minute dance party. So DreamWorks, I'm learning, okay, uh, how much time do I have? Okay, I have five minutes. Okay, what do I have five minutes in my back pocket that I can talk about? Or if I just kind of go off the cuff and talk about the characters or just kind of uh, give birthday shout outs. Oh, here's birthday shout outs. Okay, I have three minutes and I can tell my minutes by the song that's playing. I'm here to, so mm -hmm. much. Okay, I know if this song is playing, I have about two to three minutes. Do I have any two, three minutes material in my back pocket before the dance party kicks in? So at DreamWorks, I'm learning timing of bits. Like, okay, I could do this for 60 seconds. Okay. Okay, I only have 45 seconds. I cannot go into this, but I could do this. Uh, so I'm learning timing and crafting uh, to almost um, the minute, if you will, at DreamWorks. In SeaWorld, I'm learning uh, stadium, you know, presenting. Yeah, timing so and, and slower timing. and, and Timing. Stuff. That yeah, that's interesting. Time. I learned that in radio, yeah. too, and, and so many yeah. DJing, so many songs that um, in radio, they have a countdown timer, which is nice. If you have a, a 13 <laughs> second intro, it counts down 13 seconds and before the singer actually cuts in yeah. on there. But yeah, after a while, you don't even need it because you know that yeah. this song has a long intro. And so I, when I would go do live DJ stuff, I don't have the timer, but I don't know. I don't need it because I'm like, I know this song is four minutes and 26 seconds long it's got a 13 second intro yeah. and when i hear this beat i have another you know a couple of seconds and it's amazing when you really get into it how dialed in you can get a, a performance it's fun yeah it's funny you mentioned radio so if you want to go a little bit to my origin story yeah, i have that's where i was gonna go bit, next i have a little bit of radio experience a, a little bit and it came from the military so wow. i was in the navy before i was a performer and I got a chance to do a little bit of radio when I was in the Navy. And that's where I'm like, this is it right here. I really enjoy this. How do I do more of this? That's fine. Uh, Let's roll yeah. it back e even more. Yeah. I got in, I always wanted to be in radio. I would do fake radio shows with my brother and, and stuff when we were young. And then in college, I tried to get on the college radio station <laughs> and started doing karaoke and then then did radio uh in top 40 for seven years but yeah um what about you what really got you yeah. into a playful personality have you always been playful or were you like thinking that like i'm gonna be a, an astronaut someday and then you found you know radio later there when you're in the a, a little of everything you just said so <laughs> uh just a, a quick summary i actually grew up a shy kid because i grew up with a stutter Believe I make I, I talk for a living, but I stuttered as a kid. I'm uh, a little <laughs> dyslexic, and I wrote a book. Uh, so you know, you gotta, never let you it learn stop how to get over it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I, I I grew up with a stutter. Uh, my mom got my speech corrected. Thankfully, I went to a speech pathologist early on, uh, so she kind of nipped that in the bud. But I still wasn't a talker. But I was silly around my cousins. Like I would watch. You know, all the, the silly shows. My sense of humor, actually, so I was born in 78. I'm 43 now. So um, the 80s and 90s, my sense uh, of I'm humor. I'm 42, so we can oh, just yeah, okay. we can cut straight to it. Yeah, You, you get it. Okay. <laughs> so I used to read oh, a couple of things. Uh, I was a big fan of Mad Magazines, uh, parody stuff. So Mad and Cracked Magazines, they make fun of everybody. And a huge fan of Weird Al Yankovic. So that's... The foundation. The That's the foundation of my sense of humor when I would goof around with my cousins and so on. But what really started the bug was, I want to say in uh, 1987, uh, 87, 88, was in the fourth grade, uh, after school, latchkey kid, you know, Generation X, um, watching Nickelodeon. And there was a show called You Can't Do That on Television, sketch comedy for kids. And I saw that and I'm like, mom, I want to do that. I don't know where, I don't know why, I don't know how, but that show just called to me. And Nickelodeon became part of my, my childhood. From that point on, I was all in on everything Nickelodeon. So I didn't watch Disney stuff, <laughs> but I was all in on Nick, Nickelodeon, Nick. And then um, 
start watching the game shows like Double Dare and yeah, I was just gonna say know, Double Dare was mine. For sure. Yeah, what would you do? And you know, all Mark Summers hosted, and I'm like, this is amazing. And it was all filmed at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. Uh, well, at the time, I was living in Atlanta, Georgia. So I was born in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, uh, family yes. moved to Seattle for more job opportunities. And then mom and dad split up. Then mom met my now stepdad who got a job offer in Atlanta. So I ended up in Atlanta. But my stepdad had family in Orlando, Florida. So Christmas and Thanksgiving, we drive from Atlanta to Orlando. Well, all my favorite shows were in Orlando, uh, you know, film from a live studio audience, Universal Studios, Florida, you know, Nickelodeon Studios. So yeah. every time we go Christmas or holidays, hey, can we go to Nickelodeon? No, it's expensive. Or right, maybe next time. Hey, can we go to Nickelodeon? No. Uh, but every single time <laughs> I would equate Orlando with Nickelodeon just to be in the city. Even I wasn't at the studio, just to be like, I'm in Orlando. I'm probably, you know, not too far from Mark Summers or – you know, or the cast of all that's probably somewhere around here. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's where it started. And then what really so lit the fire. Uh, so it was, I want to say 94. Uh, I was in high school. Uh, I was in ROTC. So I was going to be in the military. So I found my voice through ROTC. So I told you I was shy. I grew up with the stutter. Uh, my mom enrolled me into the, R the junior ROTC program in Stone Mountain, Georgia a school called Redan High School. Uh, and I told my mom, I don't think I'm cut out for the military. She's like, you'll be fine. Trust me. I did it when I was in high school. She was right. Um, and junior ROTC is a leadership school. And yeah. you have to speak in front of the class, no matter who you are. It's part of the training. And I'm like, oh, okay. So what I did is I channeled my inner. So I have a lot of, and I, a lot of us have very loud relatives Wherever you're from, <laughs> you have very loud uncle, aunts, cousins. They're very loud. Uh, so I just channeled my loud relatives. I have loud aunts and uncles that they're just loud. That's just what they are. And I'm just like, okay, I grew up with this. I've never done it. I know how to do it. So I just spoke yeah. like my loud. And that was it. They were like, you have a good voice. Keep that up. I was like, oh, that's easy. That's so that. funny. My my story is so similar. So I'm born and raised. I'm in Kansas City uh, now. Oh. So we'll have to. Talk about uh, KC here in a second, but yeah, uh, same thing. I had two really funny uncles. One would do voices all the time and he would prank call our house. So every time he <laughs> wanted to talk to my dad, he would uh, pretend to be, you know, somebody else like the IRS or something. And I'm like, no, dad, the IRS is on the phone and, and not know it's him. And then the other one, we would do this radio man, where I think is like my, my voice comes from, but we would do that uh -huh. fake, you know, uh, hey, Gene, thanks for calling yeah. Q104. What's your favorite radio station? I love you know? that voice. And I love that voice. Do, do that all the time. And I, <laughs> I channel that a lot still these days, which is is fun. But I have yeah. also found something interesting uh, about most performers. I feel like especially radio, a lot of people are introverted because yes. it's an yes. introverted way to be extroverted. So I still Absolutely. love people. I love to be around people, but I don't like the the salesy networking, like mix it up in the crowd. I'd rather be on the stage than out in the audience. And yes. so it's my way of getting attention and making people laugh without actually having to be in the crowd and be extroverted at that time. And a lot of people in radio are, are introverted. Uh, sure. Same. I mean, I have uh, introverted tendencies. So uh, I'm, I guess what they call an omniverts. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I can be the life of the party, but I don't have to. I'm just as fine not talking uh, as if they're like, hey, Gene, uh, you do funny voices. You do this. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. But I don't do it unprompted. If somebody yeah. wants me to do it, I'll do it. But I don't have to do it. Like, I don't need it. I don't need to have a lot of people. Like, I'm just as fine standing in the corner eating the snacks uh where they're telling stories yeah, i so. find it's one or the other i don't like in the middle but i'll either sit in the back and watch a show i love to watch a great you know comedian and shows that you were talking about or a game yeah. show or a talk show or i want to be uh in it and doing it i never turn down a chance to be on a, a microphone but yeah. i'm wondering uh here before we wrap up what do you do for fun that's just for you when you're we're not performing what what's the most fun for you what do you love outside of work so funny thing is, so this is going to sound crazy. I feel like I'm one of the last few people that still gets Netflix DVD Blu-ray service. You probably are. I still, I never stopped it. I got in 04, 05, 
and it's kept. I have streaming, obviously, but for fun, I love listening to directors' commentary, almost like a podcast. I love listening to the mm-hmm. making of movies. I love listening to. All right, I watched the movie. Okay, here's how we did it. And my favorite, uh, my favorite, two favorite com- uh, director commentary are Kevin Smith and Robert Rodriguez. Those Kevin two. Smith is amazing. I don't know Robert Rodriguez. I'll have to seek one out. But Kevin Smith is oh. one of my favorite yeah, uh, you probably, people, and he's just so great. Yeah, you know Rob Rodriguez. I didn't realize he did a uh, Desperado, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, uh, Planet Terror. He worked with Quentin Tarantino all the time. Um, he yeah. did the Spy Kids movies, uh, but that guy. That's uh, that's funny. I'll have to check it out because I, I really I haven't uh, haven't seen him. I've seen a couple of those movies, but uh, yeah, love it. And um, I think there's something great too. It feels like you're we have different tastes, but very similar. That um, you're also sort of in that like not afraid to be a nerd or geek yeah. out on stuff and and no. go with what you're passionate about. That I I really love and playful people that I get to to interview and meet is I think. When you're authentic and you're not afraid to to be uh, on an edge or or to be passionate about something, I think that's really special in life. And a lot of people lose that. They try to smooth off their edges. They try to fit in and they, yeah. they want to be liked. And uh, I think that's a shame. Yeah, well, I, I tried. I tried that. I, I tried being somebody else, but that person was taken. So might as well be <laughs> me. Um, there you go. Now you mentioned uh, movies. Before we yeah. wrap up here, do you want to play a game? Absolutely. All right, here we go. We're spinning our wheel o games, and uh, just so happens that you landed on survey says. Uh, survey says, and I have some movie questions here. Uh, so we're channeling our our Steve Harvey on this one. We have the top four answers on the board. Name an animated movie that wasn't made by Disney. I gave you an easy one to start. Oh, okay, uh, Shrek. Ah, there you go. Uh, Shrek is number five. We also had Ants, uh, Toy Story, Up, and Minions uh, on there. So a couple of the uh, DreamWorks in there. Uh, name a movie that involves time travel. Wait Back to the Future. Back to the Future is number two. The Time Machine up there uh, at number one. I think that's probably overrated. Time Traveler's <laughs> Wife and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> that's a good one. All right, you're two for two. Third one is name an actor who's famous for his sci-fi movies sci-fi movies okay i would say hmm my sci-fi movies i'm gonna yeah, go an with actor who's famous for being in sci-fi movies okay i'm gonna say i want to say william shatner but he did tv shows not so much movies uh, they um, did star trek movies he's number three actually okay uh, so you got it uh number one answer harrison ford he's got indiana jones and there. star wars mark hamill oh. From Star Wars, Robert Downey Jr. at Iron Man and Chris Pine. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, awesome. Well, nice job. You went uh, three for three. I'm wondering if there's anything we can do to help you. Uh, and we can connect with you on Facebook. It's Gene yes. Lionel McGee Jr. Uh, right. But any uh, asks or gifts for the audience? How can we help you or you help us? Oh, uh, no, it, it's funny. Uh, you mentioned Bill and Ted because. I live by the book of Bill and Ted, and I just want everybody to be excellent to each other and party on. Hey, I love it. That's awesome. Uh, A great way to end for sure. Thank you so much for being on the show. It's been really cool to to meet you. And after we stop here, we'll talk a little uh, Casey and see how long you were in here. But appreciate everybody for listening. Again, share this episode with somebody that you think needs to hear it, needs to find a little fun flow and fulfillment in their life. But uh, if you want to take a playfulness quiz, join other people in the playful community or find other episodes, go to playfulhumans.com. That is the place to be. And as always, if you can't be good, be good at it. That's what I always say. Yeah. Go play, everybody. Hey, you did it. You made it to the end. But don't worry, there are plenty of more videos where that came from. Just click subscribe to Playful Humans to get notified about our future videos. Now, what are you still doing here? Go play.